checking out conditions on this Tuesday afternoon. This is probably the first time any of you have seen data from this satellite. This is GOES-19, which was launched just a few months ago. And you can tell this is a little bit unusual because it's sitting right over the central U.S. Most of the satellite imagery that we're used to comes from the east and west coast. Tropical Storm Raphael, just west of Jamaica, at 1 p.m. Eastern, it had 60 miles an hour sustained winds with pressure steady at 994 millibars. It is tracking to the northwest at 14 miles an hour, expected to cross over western Cuba sometime tomorrow. It is forecast to maintain Category 1 strength for the next two to three days. It will cross over Cuba, become strongest just north west of the island and move into the central Gulf of Mexico. Right now, there's a lot of uncertainty just how far west or east it will go. But it does not pose much of a problem for the U.S. coast because it will encounter drier air, much more sheer and cooler sea surface temperatures, which will prevent any further intensification as it approaches the U.S. Here's the general forecast from the GFS. The storm will be tracking to the northwest over Cuba, as we mentioned. The deterministic forecast has it moving onshore around Gulfport. That's going to be sometime around Saturday, and then it will gradually get picked up by this system and lofted into the northeastern U.S. Let's take a look at the latest spaghetti plots, and I do notice on social media People do not know how to use these. They dump everything onto one graphic, and that is not how you use these products. We start out with the official NHC forecast. That's our good baseline measurement on which way it's going to go. We add on the GFS. Here we've added the deterministic GFS forecast, taking that into the mobile area. Here's the European model. It's been wanting to start shifting that into the Western Gulf starting around Thursday or Friday. The European Ensemble mean has pretty much gone for a similar scenario. And the GFS Ensemble mean pretty much right in there with the deterministic model. So there's a pretty large divergence of possible solutions as we get into Thursday and Friday. Here's the GFS Ensemble members, and this is where it is acceptable to put everything on there. But I've only got the Ensemble members and nothing else, not even the NHC forecast. And we do see that there's a pretty huge spread of possibilities. I do notice some of the members are creeping to the west, so that could open up some maybe westward drift. But still, very indeterminate, very large spread of possibilities. So we'll just have to wait another day or two to see what's actually going to happen. Here's the weather chart for this afternoon. We've got a series of waves along this polar front through the Mississippi River Valley into Louisiana and off of the Texas coast. Conditions behind the front are rather mild. The 540 decameter thickness line still well up to the north. However, this next system is much colder the leading edge of that front running from eastern Montana into central Colorado and over into Nevada. Over the next day or so, that will punch to the southeast, and we will get a snowstorm in parts of the central Rockies, vast amounts of cold air advection all the way through the Four Corners area into Nevada, and that will kick up Santa Ana winds and possibly mono winds through the Sierras and the San Gabriel and coastal ranges. In the northeastern U.S., a combination of clearing and curvature in the cloud field suggesting the presence of an upper level ridge. And there it is on the upper level charts, 500 millibars, a subtropical high just off of North Carolina extending north as a broad ridge into the northeastern U.S. Troughing in the central U.S., another trough digging into Utah and Nevada with strong flow down the backside of that trough. Here is the 850 millibar chart about 5,000 feet up in the lower troposphere. Low-level jet extending from Memphis to Detroit and on up towards Montreal. 
the flow up to 55 knots across Indiana. And you can see that the Gulf is wide open. The western Atlantic also wide open into the Carolinas. So this whole area will be undergoing warm advection. And it is already underway in the Carolinas. They are heading into one of the 10 warmest days of November coming up tomorrow. Records will be broken in that part of the country. Strong warm advection into Georgia as well. And of course, in southern Florida, we have the approach of Tropical Storm Raphael, which will, of course, become a hurricane by tomorrow. We do have tropical storm warnings in the Florida Keys, and there could be some severe weather there as well. Heading into Louisiana, we've got the approach of that polar front coming in from East Texas and Western Louisiana. We've already had a few severe thunderstorm warnings this morning into early this afternoon, and that area is under a slight risk of severe weather, according to the Storm Prediction Center. The latest radar imagery does show that the storm clusters are starting to move into southwestern Mississippi. At the moment, there's not really much in the way of severe weather. I don't see any warnings, so that is some good news. And the other bit of good news is they have not expanded these advisories into Mississippi. There's no watches, no mesoscale discussions, so I think we are looking okay for the remainder of the day. In Texas, rapid clearing taking place along the Interstate 35 corridor. Clearing as well in Oklahoma and Kansas. However, in the Ozarks, we do have a lot of rain. Flood watches and flood warnings all the way from western Arkansas into southern Missouri. West Plains in the Ozarks right about here. They broke their daily rainfall record yesterday, 6.26 inches, and more is on the way. In the Northern Plains, we are looking for some low-top supercells in Wisconsin. That's going to be close to that occluded front and near that upper-level cold pool. Gale warnings across southern Lake Michigan into northern Indiana and northeastern Illinois from Champaign and Bloomington to South Bend and Goshen. Winds this afternoon could be gusting to 45 miles an hour. Then we shift our attention to the west. Conditions are starting to deteriorate in Colorado and Utah as this next weather system approaches from the west. So let's take a look at those upper dynamics. There's the polar front jet running from Washington into Nevada. The divergent left front quadrant located across Utah and Colorado. So that's where we see most of the upward vertical motion that will be shifting south into Arizona and New Mexico going into tomorrow. And there's a look at the Q vectors showing that area of ascent over Utah and Colorado. And then for tomorrow, shifting into Arizona and New Mexico. And there it is. This suggests the location of the polar front jet running about like that, separating this moist portion of the air mass from the much drier conditions on the other side of that jet. That's that transverse circulation, which flows downward on this side and upwards on the other. Some indication of a deformation zone right out here, kind of an S shape, which suggests the location of the vorticity center. There's a look at the southwestern region, quite a bit of cirrus heading south across California and Nevada. Then as we go north, well, we've got uh, quite a bit of weather there in Montana, numerous winter weather advisories, winter storm warnings, all the way from Glasgow, Miles City, out towards northwestern Montana. I haven't really gone into too much detail. There's been quite a bit to cover here today. And then as we go further to the west, some mountain wave activity showing up right there. Yeah, see that right there? Some cloud shadowing early on. That's going to be that fast flow going right across the Cascades. So let's take a look at the forecast going into tomorrow. This frontal system and the area of upward vertical motion, the snow showers and rain showers, gradually shifting south through tomorrow into Thursday. It will be drying out as we get into Thursday. However, the upper level low 
remaining over the Four Corners area and gradually coming out into Texas for the weekend. But some very cold air back in behind it, and we could see temperatures going down below freezing in parts of the southern Rockies for this weekend. There's the deterministic forecast of Raphael. We still don't know exactly where that's going to hit. The current thinking is maybe it will weaken somewhere around the central Gulf Coast area. Meanwhile, our upper level low starts moving to the northeast, bringing this area of rain across Texas and Oklahoma, which gradually moves into the Midwest area for Saturday and Sunday. Another Pacific weather system moving into the western U.S., very much like an El Nino year. This will make it out into the Great Plains area for Monday and Tuesday, and then yet another weather system, just an endless series. And another one for Thursday the 14th. So quite active in the western U.S., and this looks like quite a deep one up there in the northern plains for November 14th. And that is our quick look at what's happening around our corner of the globe. Hope you have a great rest of your Tuesday. Take care, and we will see you back here tomorrow. Bye-bye.